Good evening and welcome to the September 4, 2024 meeting of the Select Board Board of Health Sewer Commissioners of the Town of Deerfield. Time is 6.02 p.m. This meeting will be held in hybrid fashion with opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. The meeting will be held in person in the main meeting room of Deerfield Municipal Offices. In accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 30A, anyone intending to record the meeting must identify themselves to the clerk, Blake Gilmore, and provide their name and address for the record. So I'll call the meeting to order. Um, just before we go into the public comment period, I'd just like to say that um, we'll be discussing this later, but um, Casey Warren has decided after 24 years of service to Deerfield that she's retiring for health reasons, effective at the end of the week. And we will talk about that later in the, uh, in the meeting. Um, and I'd also like to encourage anyone who wants to comment about treehouse noise uh, to do so during the comment period. We will be discussing briefly uh, what the town is doing to address the issue, but um, you know, we it's a work in progress and we will probably have a public hearing later about this. Uh, so I now open the public comment period. I'll try to go back and forth between online and in person. Uh, Mr. Vector. Hi, uh, Fred Vector from Eastern Avenue. Um, I know that I've discussed the, the paving, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted on record to see what's transpired in the last month since I've been here. I can answer that real quickly. Okay. I don't have it all settled down, but uh, talking with uh, Chris at DPW, we're looking at Grave Street Eastern up to Cross, not doing Cross at the moment. So I think that's our plan for fall. Just okay. to give you an update of where we're at at the moment, still need bids and stuff. We're, we're working right, all that right. out, and we're already into September here. Yeah. And you know, no, it's been planned. Okay, yeah, he's okay. been working on it. So, okay, good, thank you. And You're welcome. In regards to the ditch, um, still got some time on. Yeah, that. my suggestion because people that live over there, or even I don't know about you up your way, but I know how it is next door that it's dry right now. It is so. I would think that they're going to have to get in there with a brush hog first and get rid of a lot of that greenery that's in there. Now would be the time to do that. Mm -hmm. It's dry. They can get in that ditch with no problem. So I don't know if they can kick somebody free. I don't know if anybody's even looked at that, but that would be a suggestion that maybe they can get in there now while it's super dry out and maybe at least get some of the vegetation out of there and then continue on with the next phase of it in November or whenever. Good thought. So, Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. So long as something's going on. Thank yep. you. You're welcome. Sure. Thanks. Thanks for coming in. Any other comments about uh, anything that uh, <clears throat> online? Um, Mr. One Clark. Online, uh, one online. Oh, no, that's a that's not a hand. Oh, right? that, that's, a yeah, that's a hand. We'll, we'll, <laughs> that's a we'll, we'll take that one next, oh, Mr. Okay. Tuttle. All right. Yeah, I just uh, I had a few concerns about the property next door to me, the St. James property that the town. Can you identify out. yourself for the audience? Yeah, it's Jason Clark, eighty-one North Main. Thanks. Um, I've seen that the DPW is making an effort to actually mow the property now, um, but my main concern is is it seems basically for the better part of this year, none of the shrubs are being maintained anymore. The church is actually in major need of a power washing. And there is still an abandoned car in the back of my lot. So I'm just going to point out that, you know, we've had problems. I know that there was allegedly a break in in this church earlier this year. I know there's been a few incidents, incidents with the library on the other side of me, but if we're going to let this property get run down, it's going to create problems in the neighborhood. Thank you. Okay. And I do have one other question too, is the 1888 building advisory committee. The meetings are being scheduled around 10 o'clock in the morning and 3 o'clock p.m., which is very difficult for the public to actually get involved with this. 
Is there any reason why the reason occur? why the meetings occur when they occur is because the architects are available when the meetings are scheduled. Um, they have attended meetings at night. They will also be attending a public an evening meeting or two meetings. I'm, I should say one on September twelfth, I believe, but it's it's posted, and another one on October first, which is also uh, will be posted shortly. Okay. Um, the the only problem I'm having with that too is I'm actually trying to go back to refer like the, any reference of what's going on with it for the last several meetings, and I can't find any recordings on it. I can't find the minutes or anything of that sort. The minutes have been made, and and we will get posting. Uh, I'll talk with Christopher Dunn, and uh, we'll make sure that. Uh, yeah, I mean, we'll my concern sure. is this is moving forward very quickly, and there's no information for the neighborhood to look up in the past. Okay, thank okay. you. I appreciate it. Um, Mr. Tuttle. Hi, how are you? Um, I'd like to express my concern again. Where you live? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Matt Tuttle, one Waitley Road in South Deerfield. Um, I would like to uh, express my concern once again about the um, apparent disregard for the bylaws and decibel limits that three houses being allowed uh, to proceed under with their concerts. And I would like to see if the select board uh, can provide some transparency as to why that's actually happening and mm -hmm. what steps are being taken to mitigate the noise pollution for people that really don't want a free concert or want that in our houses when we are trying to sleep. Okay, so we'll, we'll talk about that later in the meeting. Anybody? Great. I look forward to it. Yeah. Hi, I'm Megan Tudrin, um, South Mill River Road, and I was also call, coming here to complain about Treehouse that um, on August 27th at 10.30 p.m., I was trying to go to sleep and I could hear the whole concert in my bedroom. Um, a couple weeks before that, there was another concert where there was a huge vibration. It wasn't the noise, but you couldn't sleep because my whole chest was vibrating from the bass. Um, 1030 on a Tuesday is absolutely not acceptable. Um, there shouldn't be any concerts in the middle of the week. And in my opinion, I don't care how much they pay in taxes. Like we all live here. We've been living here for 44 years or so, you know, and um, it's just not right that we can't go to sleep when we want to go to sleep. Um, I wake up at five o'clock in the morning. Just 1030 is not acceptable. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Monique Canyon. Hi, um, I'm at 14 Captain Lathrop Drive. I apologize, I have um, COVID, so my throat is a little bit hoarse. Um, but I wanted to, again, say what others are saying is Treehouse is, I love Treehouse. I just want to go on the record for saying it. Um, but we got to have a balance. And the noise is crazy. And um, I'm here just to kind of see what, the town is doing and i'm kind of um, just interested to see if there's going to be any changes it's it's far too late on a weekday it just is too loud thanks thank you um ms yaffe hi kenny yaffe five beaver drive south deerfield um i just want to this is a different topic um, I don't know if people have talked about it before, but um, at the at right in my Beaver Drive, which um, ends up in River Road, <laughs> there is uh, some repairs that were done, but they still need to be redone. Um, so there are barriers there, those um, hazard barrels there. Mm -hmm. And then if you go down River Road, I'm sure anybody who goes down River Road towards Greenfield, there's a whole bunch of the road that is collapsing yep. into the Connecticut River. I know everybody is aware of this, yep. but to at least put up signs that would say, you know, if you're if you're coming up to where this needs to be repaired, it's a one lane. Because people who aren't living there or who are bravado or whatever. I mean, there's a lot of new people 
you know, with all of the co cottages started, colleges co started up. Um, and they just think that you can both go, you know, in different directions in one lane. And, you know, if you're a resident, you know that you've got to stop before this. But not everybody does get really hurt. Thank you for the comment. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else online? Um, folks in the audience? Okay, well, I don't see any other hands, so um, we'll close public comment period and uh, move on to um, the second or uh, the third portion of the agenda. Um, is Rachel here? Ah. Welcome, Rachel. Thank you. Good to see you. So could you just briefly identify yourself? Absolutely. My name is Rachel Stoller, and I work at the Franklin Regional Council of Governments, and I'm here about the Memorandum of Understanding for the Mass in Motion Age-Friendly Work. Does everyone have a copy of the MOU? Uh, I believe it's in our package. If not, I have copies. I'd take a copy if you have sure. it. See it. Yeah. Oh, no, I do have it. I do have it. I'm sorry. Yes, yes. Sorry about that. You have right one, Mike? Yeah, I do. Okay. Um, so uh, I'll give a little bit of background. Mass in Motion is a statewide movement that is uh, organized under the Department of Public Health Bureau of Community Health and Prevention. Um, it focuses on um, reducing the risk factors for chronic disease. There are 10 communities in Massachusetts that have Mass in Motion that are part of it. They're all doing different work. Um, in Franklin County, when we applied for this fund, how does that stand out? How much of it is about her reminding people who she is? We're going to mute them in a minute here. Bear with us. Anybody okay. else? Okay. Go ahead. Sorry okay. about that. That's okay. Um, I'm just giving a little background yeah, to know what this great. is all about. Public would love been, to know. Yeah. That'd be great. Um, so when we applied for this funding in 2021, we applied to support the towns in their age and dementia friendly planning to support individual towns as a complementary effort to the regional age friendly planning work that covers all of Franklin County. And this is a copies of the regional plan, just in case any of you have not seen it. Um, so this kind of this regional plan outlines some suggestions for towns. Many towns are using this to guide them in their um, planning work. Some towns are doing their own things. Anyway, 11 towns um, signed on to support our grant application. When we got it, we went back to those 11 towns of those two dropped out and two more joined. Anyway, um, Deerfield was one of those 11 towns as were Sunderland and Waitley. When I came back to the select boards uh, two years ago in 2022, after we got the grant, um, Deerfield, Sunderland, and Waitley uh, agreed that it would be best for the um, South County Senior Center to sort of manage the grant yeah. and implement it. So that is what has been happening for the past two years with great success. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you know uh, Jennifer Remillard and Chris Goudreau at the Senior Center. They have really taken this very, very small amount of funding, you know, with the three towns combined, it's just over $12,000. And they have really um, leveraged it to do a tremendous amount of work. Um, and this work is under the umbrella of thinking about health and how do different things impact the health of older adults in, the, in our communities, but also really across the age spectrum. So one thing that they focus a lot on is transportation, not only working with the, um, the two regional transit authorities that serve the area, um, but also getting their own van and providing a lot of additional transportation. Um, there is a work group that um, gives input to the work. They've also looked at food access, how are people getting access to food in the community um, and how to make that easier for, um, particularly for older adults. Um, and I am happy to say that 
uh, Jennifer Renillard's grant writing, she has been able to leverage this very small amount of money to bring in over $400,000 worth of grants yeah. in the last two years. Yeah. So, um, so it's, it's something that, um, it's easy to capitalize on mass in motion and the type of thinking and planning that we do together. And so I'm happy to answer any more of your questions. I just wanted to give a little bit of a framework um, and uh, ask if you would sign the memorandum of understanding on behalf of the South County Senior Center. And I have also been in touch with the other towns. I did meet with the new town administrator for Waitley and kind of filled him in. Yep. Um, and I will offer the same thing up to Sunderland. I know they're, they have an interim yep. town administrator. Yep. And so th this is um, giving us uh, FY25, 26, 27. So that's fantastic. Three yes. more years of yes. providing the fundings available. Exactly. Like yep. it might not be the same exact amount of funding, sure. but um, but the folks at DPH have promised that um, this is a 10-year uh, funding stream great. for, so it will go until 2032. So um, my folks at this COG said I could do that. Do, I could do a three-year MOU with the yes. understanding that it would be amended. Sure. Yep. Yep. We're thrilled with it, and and we're so happy with the work that just the partnership between FERCOG and and our our uh, Jennifer Remillard and Chris uh, Gujaro and um, everybody has been able to take advantage of it. And like you said, it just kind of expand it wherever we can to um to to work on other items. So it def it definitely has been a huge help to us, and we're grateful for that. Great. So I'd make a motion unless there's any other. Well, questions. I was just going to ask: Is uh, you're you're the representative to uh, the South County Senior Center, Boo? Yes. Um, what is the practical effect for this for us? Uh, it's just it's well should working say free money, but it's re it's really great to have an influx of cash to do the work that we already need to do, anyways. Mm -hmm. And um, I know Jennifer's really looking at dementia friendly work at the moment, really trying to figure out how we can, you know, m make sure that we're thinking about whatever we do, we're thinking about that population, how, how do we, um, you know, how do we serve them better and, you know, in every aspect that we do, but, but definitely around food and, you know, just getting around the house and talking about different ways to, that you can recognize dementia, early onset dementia. Um, and so that study group and work around kind of learning how that, how that, how it affects different people in different ways and how to recognize it and how to help train family members to see it. Um, it's We're just thrilled to have this partnership. I have a question. Uh, as far as, uh, does this actually, uh, do you bring in the town nurses involved in this to actually help you train the, the elderly? And the, is there any type of uh, funding that goes to them for you know, the, the different things. I know you're talking about dementia and that sort mm -hmm. of thing, but I mean, helping them with, you know, any type of uh, medical problems that they may have and be able to do, is that, is, am I off base with that? I'm just trying to figure out what. So we don't, we don't provide funding to any of the town nurses. However, whenever we offer trainings, we do offer them to all of the towns. Um, and so town nurses can participate in any trainings we offer. Um, we did last spring, actually it was in the winter, we did a um, ageism and reframing aging training mm -hmm. um, to which everyone was invited. This winter, we're going to do something about um, dementia friendly planning. And again, mm -hmm. all towns will be invited to that. So we'll just want to make sure that all the town nurses get that, get the yeah. word on that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I'd make a motion to approve the and sign or have the chair sign the um, memorandum of understanding between the town of Deerfield, South County Senior Center, and the Franklin Regional Council of Governments for age friendly planning. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for your work. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. Do you need a copy? Does, it, does anyone want copies of the sure. eight grand? Think, yeah, Great. Right. Yeah, if you have them, and we can leave them up on the up on the um, table too. Thank you. Do you need? A, do you want to take a copy uh, of that, or do you want us to we'll sign it on the spot? We'll get a copy. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get a copy. Today's the fourth, right? Right, right with you. Uh, either that, or you could just. Um, you want us to scan it and send it? Yeah. Okay, we'll do that. Then you'll have it in the email. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you so Thank much. You. Yeah. Okay. Um, so next up, Christopher Dunn. 
All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, so I, I just have a couple updates for the board tonight. Um, real quick, uh, starting up at uh, the 1888 building, and Tim, I, I'm not sure if you're going to be providing a more detailed update later, but I just wanted to flag for everyone that we're planning a public meeting for that project on September 12th. So that's uh, Thursday of next week. Um, that'll be here in the, or where you are, I should say, not here, uh, in the town hall, the main meeting space. Uh, doors will open at 6.30 and then we'll have a presentation at seven. So I certainly encourage everyone to attend. Um, we're gonna have Kuhn Riddle, our architects on hand, as well as the OPM uh, P3. So that'll be a, a great intro to the project for folks who haven't already been involved um, in anticipation of that special town meeting on October 7th. Um, so I'm sure Tim can provide further updates on the project if he's got it on his uh, list for later in the meeting, but wanted to flag that for everyone. Um, other projects, Leary Lot. Uh, so um, construction's progressing nicely. Um, we actually had uh, Greg Snyder was with us on uh, on Tuesday, uh, so you just yesterday morning, uh, our new assistant town administrator was kind of just stopping in for a couple hours, and he had an opportunity to sit in on our uh, construction meeting that we have Tuesday mornings, and then he was able to join me and, and actually visit the site, um, so it was great to be able to kind of introduce him to that. Um, as I said, um, you know, construction is progressing nicely. Uh, they're at the point where they're just trying to figure out the the pads for the actual uh, charging stations, which have been ordered. And we're working with Universal Electric also on obtaining our um, needed needed utility cabinets for that area as well. So, um, yeah, that's that's progressing nicely. And in the next month, um, I'm going to actually be seeking reimbursement from FHWA for some of the grant expenses. So we should finally see some of that money come back um, out of that $2.5 million grant. So that's going to be great. Yeah. Um, related, uh, so Elm Street. Um, so I I think I'd spoken previously about a complete streets project there. Um, so Time Bond wrapped up their survey work, I believe last week. I'm just waiting to see an actual copy of the survey. Um, so that's a big first step. They're going to actually be joining us at the Leary Lot uh, construction meeting next week um, so that we can coordinate the two projects. Um, but that'll also be an opportunity for Chris Miller and, and anyone else who needs to be involved on the DPW side to get a take a look at what time bond is preliminarily proposed. Um, and then uh, they're also going to walk Elm Street that Tuesday just to take a look at things. Um, I am trying to nail down a public meeting date uh, later this month, um, and I was I wanted to actually check with the board if the week following uh, September that September twelfth, eighteen eighty eight meeting. Um, I'm just trying to pull up my calendar. The nineteenth would be that Thursday. Yeah, and that was kind of what I was thinking potentially. Uh, just. That'll give us an opportunity to um, get word out. And then also, you know, at that 1888 building meeting, we can even just let people know, you know, <laughs> hey, come come by again next week. And we've got this meeting. On. We'll um, I'll kind of discuss that further um, with some of the, the committee members, et cetera. Um, but uh yeah, I'll, that's that's what we're looking at, and I'll once I have that finalized, I can notify the board. Um, and that meeting really is mostly about kind of reintroducing people to the project. Obviously, we had a complete streets plan done for the whole town, oh, almost four years ago at this point, more than four years ago at this point, possibly. Um, and so there's you know projects that are proposed for kind of each one of these streets that need that complete streets treatment, including Elm Street between Railroad and Main. Uh, I think we just kind of need to re-engage with the public and with business owners, make sure it still makes sense to people and that they they don't have any major issues. So um, again, definitely encourage people to attend that. We'll be getting word out about that meeting um, as well. Uh, other projects, MVP. Um, so Bloody Brook, uh, I'm going to have my first kind of check in with our MVP coordinator coming up next week. And I'm pleased to say that we've also managed to get the consultant 
or the consultants, I should, I should say, who are on that project uh, to agree to not only do the Bloody Brook, the hydrologic hydraulic study of that, but also Sugarloaf Brook, um, also known as Blacksmith Brook. Um, and that's going to be a separately funded project. Uh, it's going to be under the MVP seed money that we have. Um, so that should that should cover that. And I think we need to confirm with the our, our MVP coordinator, Chris Curtis, and then also the, the MVP core group. But it looks like that's probably going to be the best way forward. So that's it's nice to be able to get those two different um, watersheds um, studied in the same, basically in one fell swoop. So that'll be that'll be nice to have done so we can understand better what kind of infrastructure improvements we need so that we will <laughs> not have so much inland flooding in South Deerfield. Um, other updates, uh, network geothermal projects. So this is, you know, the study that Bureau Happold is doing on the feasibility of, you know, uh, a kind of district geothermal system in South Deerfield. Um, they are looking to be, I, I believe, on site uh, next week. Um, we do have an energy committee meeting that I think they're going to be attending. Um, and that's going to be an opportunity for them to share their kind of preliminary findings for the study. Um, we also had UMass Amherst, uh, their uh, landscape architecture and regional planning program reach out. They're interested in having students do kind of mock-ups, basically, uh, of what that might look like um, in Deerfield. Um, so we'll, more to be said on that, I think uh, Denise Mason and M.A. Swedland are kind of taking the lead and helping out coordination with those students. Um, but that's kind of a, a fun add on to that project. That's really, you know, for the most part, just about feasibility and, you know, how do we make the numbers work? Uh, so more to come on that front. And I think um, I think that's it for for me for the moment. I just wanted to check and see if any board members had any questions on any of those projects well, or anything else that's out there. Just to hit on the the DES front entryway project, um, it looks like they're moving along on that. They were held back on some waiting for some drainage parts. I think that took a while. Um, and I know um, our engineers are looking at you know making sure everything's done right. And uh, Darius has had it, has eyes on it daily and trying to make sure that that gets done. We were hoping to have it ready by the beginning of school, but it just that you know with parts uh, took some time to get and some extra work they had to do, uh, but it, it's, it's moving along. It's going to look really nice when it's, when it's completed. Um, I think the asphalt's going to happen shortly. I haven't been by it today, but um, I, I know they that, have the scratch coat down yeah. and the base coat and they have to put the finished coat in and yep. you know, reset a couple of stones that have separated. But yeah. And then they did, um, they've been working on that other side, the West side of the building too, which was, you know, the walkway was really bad. They, that all got paid. Um, I think uh, concrete, and then uh, they re kind of did the loam around the trees and everything because that was all showing roots and trip hazards and stuff. So that whole area looks pretty good. Eventually, we're going to have to redo the loop because um, that was kind of a temporary thing we put in at one time. But yeah, it's looking looking pretty good over there. It'd be nice when it gets done and we get all that equipment out of the way and just have the kids line up out front. So yeah, uh, and just a quick follow up on. Borough hap hold the uh, um, the heat grant and is there a is there a completion date uh, co coming up soon or is that further along in the in the fall? Yeah, so we we have a check in with the heat team um, later this month, and then that that report has to be wrapped up prior to December thirty first. Okay. Anything from you, Blake? No, I'm good. All right. Thanks, Christopher. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. So, does anyone on the select board have announcements? That well, I just, make uh, well, I just want to, you know, just maybe make a couple of things that I've seen in emails going through about um, bridges. So, I know we're working on the, um, the you know, North End Bridge here, uh, the dry bridge uh, at the end of North Main Street. Um, DOT. I, I think Chief has been in contact with the engineers there. They're working on um, fabricating the, you know, supports and stuff that need to be replaced. Um, so I, I think they're working on that. It's, you know, something 
I kind of thought, is this indefinite? <laughs> but it it appears it's not. It appears that you know they're working towards a solution there to get us up and open again. Um, so I think that we may find that's open a lot sooner than we thought and um, get longer the, than we want. But yeah, I, didn't they uh, have some information about um, actually securing the the wood timbers? Yeah, that there's some sort of timber they thing have to replace the the existing rotted out wood timbers. With, yes, yeah, which is kind of weird. You think of a bridge with wood timbers, but it is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, so until and, you know, until that whole thing gets redesigned, but um, but yeah, so that that's moving along. I know that we've been in contact with DOT about the bridge over 116. You know, everybody comes down 116 at the fire station, and that's all going to get redone. So that um, it's going to be a headache for us for uh, quite a long time. Um, but we've been, you know, Chief has been trying to push them to keep two lanes open. Um, they were going to have one lane with signal. Um, we're concerned about traffic coming off 91 southbound turning uh turning there and just backing up um so I, i'm not sure where that it's, it's more expensive to leave the two lines open so but we've been really pushing it for emergency and i know that uh chief swayze and chief Pachurik have, have and um chief sparks have been have been working with uh dot about making sure that you know ems vehicles police everybody can get through that through so there they're actually doing structural. They're not just reskinning it. No, I think yeah, I think they're doing structural too because uh, I believe they're going to widen the sidewalk and kind of it's going to get a full rehab. Okay. Yep. Um, and I think that's going to start fairly soon. Uh, they're still in the planning stage, so um, just want to give a quick update on an email on that. And then I, I know everybody's seen Lee Road is kind of just the one that goes over to the transfer station bridge has been kind of not paved for a while. And I think they were DOT was waiting on some sort of part. Uh, it was that. again drainage and drainage yeah, yeah for... the drainage that were soaked down through and yep he i think i just read that he was talking either the end of this week or next yeah week. it was be re coming well. soon and then it so that should be one headache i mean at least we got rid of the the one-way traffic signals but right. um but yeah so that should be finished up pretty quick soon uh so that's really all i had for just well, anything i, think I saw my email. the sunland email. bridge is just about ready to open all the way that'll up be too, nice so too. that'll yeah, they've just paved the last section of that. So we just need to do the sidewalks up up to the Sugarloaf would be great. You know, one thing at a time. I guess. Yep. Yep. And what about you, Blake? That's it. Okay. Um. All right. So the next um. Oh, next item up is you have board of health stuff. I do. Unless I, you do. Well, I was going to say, um. I sit in on a group with uh, Megan Tudrin, that's the Valley Health Regional Coalition, and uh, we just want to flag up that uh, Tripoli and West Nile are being um, found in our area. So just encouraging people during the morning and evening hours when mosquitoes are very active to, you know, be aware that you should be wearing uh, long sleeve clothing and and treating if you're going to be out in and in. in it's in any night. meaningful way, you know, treating with mosquito repellent and so forth. Um, and also that, as one of our uh, callers mentioned, uh, COVID seems to be circulating. I know of at least two personal friends who are down with it at the moment. And, uh, and Monique Gannon, I think she mentioned that she was ill. So just be aware that it is out there. And uh, um, as kids go back to school, um, keep that in your mind mm -hmm. and free tests as Megan. Yeah, we've yes. got, we've got tests Great and we news. replenish them periodically. Thank you. And uh, yeah, so uh, we really appreciate the, the continued um, cooperation that the town's getting from the HRC. So and we have a supply on the table here. So if people want to come, come get a test, you can do that. Um, and and our, our family, I think our um, Cindy Majewski, our town nurse also, um provides the free tests for the seniors that she deals with uh, through the senior center so um, while we've got megan uh you're managing the narcan as far as the county goes aren't you as far as that goes um we were just like again i was talking to one of our health agents in regards to that and they were lo looking at the money in that aspect do you have any comment as far as the you you actually are doing the training right now and and setting up trainings for places all over the county or how's that working yeah, yeah let's come up for a second up. we did 
We did You're one right. recently. We did it. We did uh, one here. I think here. we've done three yeah. in Deerfield. Yeah. So, so through, go ahead. Um, so Anne Master Tataro, she's the um, public health nurse that works for the VHRC, and she will hold any classes that people want. You can also get free Narcan in her office. Um, she has office hours in Sunderland at the town hall. Um, and it's just because there wasn't space for her here. Otherwise, yeah. she would have split her time. But so right now, anybody can go to her office and get three Narcan, or they can come up to Greenfield and get it for me. Anytime somebody wants a training, though, it's it's always available. Um, she is looking to get some of the naloxone boxes put up and okay. she's working on one at a bus station in Sunderland. Those are great, but they're only good if people know where they are and when there's right. an emergency, it's better to have, you know, everybody have them in their car yes. and things like that first. Um, we, this program is at no cost to us. We do have to have an MCSR agreement, which is a controlled substance registry. Um, we have that through Greenfield and we have to have a doctor who's a ordering provider, um, mm -hmm. sign in and. So we do all the paperwork for that, but we there's no cost, and we just give it to the town of Deerfield. Yep. So and anytime we need something like that, we can get it. It's not an anytime issue. Anytime we can okay. get as yep. much out as and that's you need. That, that's off of a grant, correct? It's part of the, the seven, I think. The training part, the nurse's salary comes out of the grants. Yeah. Okay. But the the Narcan is paid for free through the state. We don't need to even yeah. package our grant funds for that. Good. Um, Thank you. Good. Do you Thank want to you. say something about opioid? Are you like, yeah. is this an okay time? Sure. Go ahead. Um, so I don't know if Deerfield has done an opioid settlement survey yet, but one of the things that they recommend is coming up with a survey, sending it out to the people in town, say, have you had anyone in your family or friends that have been affected? What kind of services would you like provided? Is it transportation? Is it housing? Is it to pay for rehab? Um, things like that. I know there are a lot of families. Um, I also used to work at the elementary school. Um, so I know a lot of families are affected and yeah. you know, that opioid money can be used for many different things. It could be to pay for the the children of opioid um, survivors or, um, there or was, people um, with addiction to pay for their sports or, you know, something like that for the year, you know, anything to kind of stop this cycle and give the money directly to the people that really um, were affected by the crisis. One one a aspect I was looking at with a member who was affected in the community was um, he was trying to develop Eliza's watch. I don't know if oh, you've yes, heard of that. Yes. So um, I'm not sure where that's at in the process. And we, you know, we talked about it before we had the m money and, um, you know, it, it takes a lot of money. So we talked about, well, could we group everybody's money together to help? And I'm not sure kind of how that all goes, but just the, 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 the gist behind it was that it was something that you wore. It was very cheap. So it wasn't like an eye watch that someone's going to sell, but you had it on you and it, it monitored you. And if you stopped moving for a certain amount of time or oxygen level went down or something like that, it, it would, it would automatically 911 call and 911 call to, to your loved ones. So you, you know, if you were overdosing, you, you could get notified really quickly and it, probably had a GPS on it so you could do, you know. Yeah, those type of things are fantastic because it it gives the money to the people that really yes, are affected. Are struggling it. with it. And mm -hmm. I just, you know, I don't know about costs and everything. It had to be cheap enough that people weren't selling them, right? Uh to buy drugs, uh, but was useful enough. Mm -hmm. Um so I know that uh, he was working on that a bit, and I'm not sure where that was at. And if you've heard anything, no, anything I other than that, to look it up to see if it's out on the market yet. But it's yeah, not. it's not. I think it needs some some extra funding, and there was some, you know, getting into. There's a lot that goes along with it, but I'm just curious what your thoughts were on that. So, mm -hmm. okay, I think that one of the things on that too is that uh, the opioid uh, situation affects every part of society. Yeah. It's not like you have right. young people doing it or whatever. It's, it's, it's got to do with prescription and everything else on that end of it. So it's something that even though, you know, we, we should be reaching out, we should be reaching out to everybody so that anybody that's affected, if they, they know they've got a helping hand there, that's a good thing. We do really, I, I know the VHRC is, we kind of are really kind of pushing to get Narcan in more into the schools. Um, right now they have it in the nurse's office, but it would be fantastic if the Board of Health could recommend getting it put into the, with every DFib that's in town. Um, I know that my daughter plays soccer and at Hurley Field, there was um, someone actively using in the bathroom there during one of the practices. Mm -hmm. um, this was not a student, this right. was just a community member, but yep. you know, I would, I, 
I think back, I was like, gosh, nobody had it there. You know, right. what if they needed it? So, you know, it's in my daughter's backpack. It should be in everybody's backpacks. Right. But, um, you know, something like that where we could get it more, you know, just put it out into the schools, put it in all the defibs, um, in all the jump bags, you know, even in all the classrooms. It could be everywhere. It doesn't have to be a school nurse that can administer it. Right. You can't hurt anybody with Narcan. You can right. give it to anybody and it won't hurt them. And yep. I think like that's the real message that we need to send out. Thank you. For Thank that. you. Let's work Thank on you, that. Megan. And Megan, we'll be looking forward to working with you on that too. <laughs> Good. <laughs> All right. So um, next up is we have one set of minutes. Has everybody yes, had an opportunity to I look have. at them? Yep. Uh, the only thing I would add to the minutes was that just to put an absentee section for Trevor McDaniel because I wasn't there. I mean, normally there's one, but I, for some reason it wasn't there. That's the only thing I would add to the minute. Okay, so, so do you so I'll friendly make the amendment. motion. Friendly amendment. Yep. I yep. uh, move to approve the minutes of June twelfth, twenty twenty four, as presented. Thank you. Or as corrected. Or yep. with corrections as specified. corrected. Yeah. I'll second that motion. All right. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Chairman McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Elchi, aye. You made the correction, so you can approve it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um. So next up is a discussion about the, the town has recently received a Department of Environmental Protection Administrative Consent Order. And this is a, a notice of non-compliance related to work that was done on an emergency basis, um, various areas of town um, after the storms of 2023. So um, old, um, swales and river uh, stream bed areas uh, were cleared out and silt that had collected from the storms was piled in various places um, with the uh, the people who did the work were not aware that they were in violation of DEP rules about uh, depositing soil in when you clear out wetlands. So there's an area in Hawks Road there um, are several areas uh, in the uh, the fields across from the, the bittersweet area and the Richardson's. Um, there's a lot of, um, the largest section is in the North Meadows area where um, farm swales were cleared out uh, that had been um, plugged up for years and years and years. So um, the DEP has been out uh, to flag the areas that are in non-compliance um, we, we, we received a letter uh, giving us a specified amount of time in which to address the concerns. Uh, Chief Pachorek, who's the emergency management director, is coordinating with Chris Miller and Pete Law of the Conservation Commission to work with DEP to bring the town back into compliance. Um, we're in the process of um, getting uh, working with contractors to find out how much it's going to cost to remove the soil and and uh, bring it to a place where it can be either reused. I, I think most of the soil is uh, is good, and mm -hmm. it's uh, we we found out today that it can be used in farming settings. So um, anything that's not able to be reused has to be removed from where it is and uh, brought to a location that's appropriate. Casey Warren has been working with them as well. Um, so that work of developing a cost estimate for this is underway, and we'll then look for a funding source to pay for this. Um, we have a good relationship with um, the DEP chief and the uh, enforcement officer, uh, and so we're looking forward to accomplishing this work uh, and reseeding as we do the work um, to bring ourselves back into compliance. Um, we'll have more on that once uh, the, the plan's been fully developed. Um, hopefully we'll have uh, Chris Miller and Chief Pachorek here to talk about it at a future meeting. And the work will probably commence as soon as we can uh, get some realistic uh, cost estimates. And I, I think that some of this has already been disposed of, some of the materials that are out there, but there are materials that you can't get vehicles in to get them out and they have to, go with specific types of vehicles. We've been talking to contractors about that to see, or Casey has anyways, uh, to see how to get it out to the road. 
because the farmers would take it, but they can't get into it because of the the setup, whether it's wetland or whatever it is. I'm not sure, but um, that's part of the reason why we have to figure out a cost on this thing because it's going to be a little bit more expensive than we have just to, going in there. We, as Blake says, we have to um, go out and rent um, wide tracked vehicles that can go over wet areas, and and in particular, it's recommended that we get. Um, vehicles that have a 360 degree pivot so that they can um, dump from any any angle so those are you can rent them by the week so we're, we're in the process of locating the vehicles finding out if they're available and finding out what the weekly charge is so that we can coordinate um, if there's one day work on hawks road and there's four days work in the north meadows we want to be able to schedule it so that everything gets done within the period of time that we have the one week rental. And if that means if we have a rain day, we're gonna need to have that staffed on a on a sixth day rather than a regular work week. So yeah, more on that as a, as the chief and, and Chris Miller get it all sorted out. So uh, do we need a, um, a motion to sign this now and send it back within the 14 days? Um, I don't think so, it's directed to the EMD. Yeah. Um, and he's going to sign it. To sign it okay. Yes. Yeah. I just want to make sure that. And gets I believe done actually yep. fourteen no, days. No, he's well aware. There okay. were several action items that yep. you guys have talked about. There's a couple of other things we're following. Casey, do you have any uh, anything to add on that? Well, I did um, have a chance to reach out. There was some discussion in the room when we met yesterday about hiring somebody to basically act as a clerk and monitor the entire project because we have to report back to DEP. Um, in such a way that we have to have detailed information. So keeping logs, taking photographs. Um, I reached out to our former superintendent to see if he would be interested, and he is. Oh, good. Um, I think he's got some familiarity with the project, so it would be helpful. Um, I did ask him to talk to the Conservation Commission chair because he's got a better idea of all the tracking process that needs to happen. But what's going to end up happening is Pete Law, the CONCOM chair, and um, Amy Hahn will be working to develop a project management element to help facilitate that. So I think it would be useful if we could have Kevin come in and do that work. Um, but I wanted to talk to him before I was able to speak about it tonight, and I was able to talk to him this afternoon. So that'll get facilitated a bit more. Okay, yeah, and uh, that would be great because the other element to this is that um, Brett Gawanter at uh, DA is also offered to do some, uh, DA needs soil from time to time for various projects. And uh, one of the areas that was affected by this work is um, land that DA is renting from a local farmer. So he's off, He's offered to help us uh, deal with that location and time permitting and uh, resources permitting to perhaps be a fallback for some of the other work that we need to do in town uh, with regard to the consent degree, decree. Um, anything else from anyone on that? All right, so next item is um, the treehouse treehouse brewing noise complaints that we've been receiving. Um, and we're coming into, I think the last concert of the season is on the 12th of September. I think there are two more in between. So I know everyone will be sleeping better on the 13th. Um, so what we've been doing is um, going out to monitor decibel levels in various parts of town at the location itself. We'll continue to gather data um, we have what appear to me to be um, two or three different sets of guidelines that that relate to what Treehouse believes it has the right to do there, um, involving like what time the concerts are allowed to run until. Um, so all of these things, we want to get data. We want to consult with the uh, town council to make sure that we can come to a conclusion about what is the what is the time limit on a concert. Um, I was always under the understanding that it was 10 o'clock 
um, but there is a ZBA special permit that has 1030 as a date, as a time. And I think there might even be another one that suggests that 11 o'clock is the time. Um, so these things all need to be clarified for the select board um, so that we know what our legal footing is. And Casey, if you can chime in on any of this, feel free. Um, we intend to develop this information, this uh, sound data, and so, so forth. You, you, you have to have accredited decibel meters to track what the noise levels are at various locations. So um, we may need to do more of that, but the intent is to come up with a, an action plan and then work with treehouse management to you know, address when do they schedule concerts? Uh, uh, you know, what volumes actually are they per allowed to? Um, one document says, you know, 10 decibels above the ambient noise. So we need clearer definitions that they can understand uh, and that would give us um, a basis for actually taking action if they they appear to be in violation. So it's a process that they, we're... Um, I think that I can't, I went out several nights and uh, there were certain nights that we didn't hear a thing, but on the nights we could, you could hear it plain as day. So they were trying to take in some of the atmospheric conditions and some of the other aspects of it and maybe something to help Treehouse to um, reduce the, the volume of this. And the other part of it is I think that we were, uh, we we're going to be looking at doing a hearing at some time in the future right. and bring them in to actually discuss this whole setup and to come up with a, a better plan for them if they want to continue working on this. And um, we, again, when we started looking into it, there's different bylaws and other parts of the, the equation here that are conflicting. So I think we need to get through those and straighten them out before we can make a um, a decision on this and including their their license that sort of thing so right. i mean that's something we have to look at and like i said just see if we can get them to come in compliance so that we're not we're not having a problem with this during the week um and i know we've we've discussed with them about doing weekends and it's difficult with the acts that they have because it's a lot more money for them and that sort of thing so i mean We've been discussing things and trying to come up with solutions, but now we're going to have to go back into what the town has done in the past. So, yeah, I mean the 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 whole purpose of this is, as Blake mentioned, we we want to gather the information, have a conversation with the legal team of the town, so that when we go into a, a public meeting, hearing situation with Treehouse, we have the facts on hand, so that uh, we can reach an agreement. Compliance is always better than. Uh, an adversarial, uh, you know, uh, you don't need the people to get lawyers involved if you can avoid it. Um, and we want to do all this work before the next concert season. So um, to encourage them to develop plans that don't impact school, don't impact, uh, you know, late hours in the evening. And so this all hinges on what what legal counsel tells us we can do. Uh, and and we have some, you know, some good options, but we just need to be, uh, we just need to be, uh, you know, methodical about the approach. So I'm sorry that it's not going to immediately solve the problem for the next three concerts. Um, but uh, the plan is to do something proactive for next year so that residents don't have this problem. One of the things that when Blake and I toured with um, Chief Pachorik and uh, Bill Swayze was um, talking to them about, can you get a different kind of stage that stops sound from traveling backwards towards North Main Street? Those kinds of things. I don't know how expensive those fixes would be, but, um, you know, oh, potentially we can use, uh, you know, license uh, renewals and stuff like that as a leverage for compliance. So, but more on that, and we'll certainly... Um, you know, this will be a public public meeting when we when we get this together. Probably won't happen until after the the national election, but we will well publicize it. 
So just a reminder that we had public comment at the beginning of the meeting, so we're not taking public comment now. Was, um, is there any further thoughts on this, Casey or Trevor, about Treehouse? I mean, I just, I just echo what you said, that we're, we're gathering the information, making sure that we're on solid ground, and, and then addressing it. We'll get it taken care of one way or the other. I just need to know exactly, you know, what the permitted decibel levels are, um, what bylaw, what set of laws regulate it. You know, there there's so many different permits available on that project that they all have a different interpretation. So we just need to make sure it's all squared away and then we'll we'll set up a hearing and move forward after we gather all the data. Okay. Um so um special town meeting warrant, Casey, do you want to talk to us about that? So what you see is, and Trevor's going to, I think I missed something. Trevor will chime in at some point. Yep. But what you see is a series of article requests that came forward to me. Um, one of those requests was to put a placeholder item on in case we have an unpaid prior year bill. Um, I would suggest the board leave that there until the 18th yep. uh, in case one comes in. We haven't quite finished closing the books. So, you know, worst comes to worse. We, like you that. guys have time by the 18th to remove it. Yep. Um, the second article here is to act on recommendations of the community, community preservation committee. And this is the framework article that we use in annual town meeting. What most article language shows is what the conversation would be related to with in terms of what the topic is. So normally with one of these, we don't put a lot of detail in unless we have it ready at the time that we're posting. So that language could change slightly if the board thought it necessary, but the details of the projects are often in the motions. Um, article three is a capital improvement article again we don't have the details of it there's two things that have to go through capital um okay and i've tried to mark brennan and i spoke last week he's trying to pull a meeting together i haven't checked my email for him today all right I, checked it. I saw him voting yesterday but i didn't get a chance to ask so there's me. there are two items that possibly could go through on that well there's two things that could be considered they need to make a decision as to whether they want to see anything happen so the one thing i would add and maybe we could sneak it in is uh, as part of this article or a separate one because it's got to go through the school um so just to kind of give a background is that um over the last several years we have been funding a capital project to replace the or to install um uh, air conditioning units like the mini splits in all the classrooms at, at the elementary school and then it, you know so we we would say we would put up fifty thousand dollars to do that um uh eversource would then uh rebate back money to the town and depending on when which year it falls into either we could get more units and do additional rooms or if it passes over fiscal year, the money has to go back to the town and then get reallocated to the school. And I think that's kind of part of it. Some of the rebate money went to the school and some of the rebate money came to us and it was in a split year. So I think we have um, the rebate that we got back was $22,125. And with the money rebate that the school got back, we only need four more units to finish the elementary school and be done with that project. So um, I would love the article that just, as we did before, remove, you know, move that rebate money back to that project and finish out the job and um, get the four done. And I think, I think what Darius was hoping to do was just in the meantime, because the contractors were available and ready to do it. I, they may have already done it um, was to uh, finish the project and then, use school choice money to pay and then um you know we just move this money back at annual t at, at the special town meeting to cover it so so you would want to see an article an article um what brenda said was an article for accounts. for free cash that we have already from the rebate 
um, uh, an article for free cash uh, for the elementary school um, mini split project. And I think it was from 22 and 23 was the rebate money that came back. Um, but I know that uh, I know that um, that Shelly was working with Brenda and trying to get that kind of figured out how much they were going to request. So I'll, I'll okay, get that so nailed down. It will have to be a sum of money. It will be a sum of money. And we have the 22,125 right now, but I think, um, and also the school also has some money, which will, will definitely cover the cost, but I just, I'll get the exact number that he needs from us. So have them decide. Yeah. Oh, if we so want to add that article. article. Yeah. yeah. Article. So I would make a motion to add an article for free cash for a capital project, um, moving money back to the school. Go ahead. Point of order. Um, do we need to reopen? No. Okay. It's you. So you asked everybody to send in everything by the 30th. Um, what I had, I didn't have that information. Mm -hmm. This is your warrant. You can add more to it. You don't have the same time limitations that you do for an annual. Okay. Good. Um, so you could add it if, okay, if you want. Fine. I just wanted yep. to clarify the procedural fine. question. Yep. So I would make a motion to add an article, or I don't know if it can be added to three or if it has to, because I don't know, if, because it's over 10,000, if if um, I would like Capital to look at it as well and just get their blessing on it, which they have in the past too. They but, have. But they I have. Just, just to go through all the motions and make sure everybody's taking a look at finance committee i know we'll review it as well um i'd love to have those two look at it um two um committees look at it and give their approval to but to add that um add that article to to move that twenty two thousand one hundred twenty five at this point so that is a motion that's my long-winded uh, I, I second it did that motion. she did not type this up nice it's and not i'm sorry i second that <laughs> thank you okay so yeah if you understood that casey i understood what you said <laughs> great all right thank you surprised enough so did i <laughs> <laughs> all right uh is there any further so essentially what you're saying is they got rebate money it got put into an account yeah. now we want to transfer it over so that they can Pay for use it for units. the work that may either be done or, or almost is done. about to be done. Yes, exactly. Perfect. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Um, all right. So if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchie, aye. Thank you. All right, Casey, back to you. So there was a request at the Finance Committee meeting last week to add a sum of money to general stabilization. I put, because I wasn't sure what the amount was, um, I put the words, a sum of money, that's generally what we use. I did find out they're looking for consideration by town meeting of 300,000 based on the estimated amount of free cash that they the town could potentially have approved. Um, so I left it as a sum of money for this discussion, but it doesn't have to be settled right this second. Right. I think you really, a sum of money basically tells people that you're going to ask for an amount to be transferred from free cash into general stabilization to help replenish general stabilization from what was used at annual town meeting. Um, but I wanted you to know that they're looking at that number of 300,000. So moving forward that could change the language or you could leave it as a sum and put it into the motion at town meeting which is normally what i would do um and i don't know what the amount of money since we just talked about the request that trevor added i don't know what the sum of money for that would be so my recommendation leave it a sum right now and i think you will see that the finance committee is probably going to identify that amount. Right. And the, the, um, the actual motion that we make at town meeting could have, that, the amount, could, could the have a sum of money that's yeah. defined. The sum of money would that be the select defined. Board in decides the makes sense to, to yeah. put into the accounts they're requesting. Yeah. Right. Okay. So it does give you a little bit of time. And so the reason I'm saying this is you also have, we talked about the DEP consent order earlier. I, so to everybody's point, we don't know what that 
amount is going to be. But if we have to ask the town to appropriate for that purpose, it could impact what happens with what gets replenished, depending on what that amount is. So that's the other reason I hesitate to put a number block in there right this second, um, because article the next article, which right now is Article 5, but will change, um, requests transfer from available funds a sum of money to allow us to do the work for the to comply with the consent order. The language of that could be tweaked a bit by council, but essentially the idea is give people an understanding of what can be discussed in the article. Yeah. So article six right now is the next article is to authorize the town or authorize the select board to convey, sell, or otherwise dispose of a parcel of land for the purpose of senior housing, and that parcel is 8385, or well, I won't give you the number, 8385 North Main Street. Um, council hasn't reviewed the language of any of the articles, but this is as close as I can get based on the previous article for acquisition. Um, I would assume that council may make some tweaks to it, but the purpose is to request that the town be able to sell that property for the purposes or dispose of that property for the purposes of senior housing. And this is the property we just purchased. Yes, it's the former St. James Church. Former St. James Church. And the plan was to take the property and then to turn it into senior housing. Right. This is the avenue that needs to happen to make that That's happen. how it's been explained to me by senior okay. housing. All right. Chair. Um, do, do they have a, I mean, they don't have a, a buyer yet, correct? I mean, do they have a. So they have to go through an RFP so, process. So, yeah, basically, yeah, they, they have. Um, they were working with uh, FERCOD to develop a request for proposals. I see. You know, which would yep. be, we have this land. Um, we want senior subsidized housing to be developed in some form or fashion here. Mm -hmm. uh, come up with a plan that says we can build 25 units or 22 units mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, typically, contractors they go out and find the resources through state and federal grant programs and other right. funding sources. Um, they want to have the land under their control at that point. To be um, so, yeah, and, and yeah. just, it, it will become taxable at that point once it reverts to a, a contractor. Yeah. And then whatever is developed on that land will also become taxable. And, um, but you need to trans, you need to, transfer the the land to the contractor in order to effectuate the rest of the process right. okay so you'll notice that there's i'm i made some notes here and they're really for me but it helps everybody else understand what has to happen um so there's a requirement in the bylaw that anytime there's a consideration of the use of town on land that the planning board make a recommendation mm -hmm. about it so i sent a request last week to have the planning board opine to make okay. a recommendation on the article for the senior housing question so article six yeah. and article seven article seven is the request from open space to establish permanent protection of four parcels in town yeah the language could end up being tweaked but what i was trying to get to in the first section of this is sort of the identification of the site names the amount of space and this is something that was provided to me by the open space committee thank you they did a lot of good background so it was easier to write but this is one of those articles that we need finance or we need planning board to make a recommendation so when i sent a request about the other parcel i included this one so they're aware it's going to go on an agenda and planning board should be able to get back to you i'm hoping hoping they can get back to you before the warrant has to get posted but if nothing else, in the town meeting guide that carries the motions, the planning board recommendation should be available for people to read. You'll have had time at least to get that put together. I had a quick question on that property. So the the old Pine Nook Road, you know, the Pumptic Rock. Yep. And then the forest on Pine Nook Memorial Forest. We would still be able to manage that forest as a forest. 
I don't know. Well, this that's is, I, I there's some questions. Ignorance I, on this. Yeah, I don't know. I, I want some of that answer before we so that's lock a it question. in because uh -huh. we want to be able to maintain it. Um, the forest land and you know walking trails I and mean, that that was our our talk for a while was could we get a small parking lot up top there working with you know Eagle Brook and um, just to try and get the cars off the road yeah. and that you know maintain outdoor space and walking i would think open space would still give that um give that use to us before we lock this in i mean i know we're not building condos up there that's the whole idea is to protect the land but yeah. still i don't think that it, this right? is i don't think this is intended to restrict correct being able to develop facilities to facilitate using Na the land nature. for nature right for trail That's walking yeah. um, there's also some uh dcr is looking at uh, two other parcels of land that are quite large that also ab may abut some of these properties that that's what i was trying to get clarity right. about earlier right. today and uh you know they would be become part of the state forest system mm -hmm. um but the idea is that having those lands the, the ones that we're referencing now um, yeah. i think it's several hundred acres um would allow the state to to provide funds for trail upkeep etc yeah that was the so, idea right yeah uh, okay just and, want to make sure that was still available to us yeah okay. yeah i think and, that was part of the and, question but i think julie could answer that question yeah exactly than I can, just yeah as well and okay. she um and and also you know to to clarify you know apparently you know random people are using the land for various things that eagle brook doesn't necessarily agree with or and they're right. up there up there yeah so to try and get some overarching uh Obviously. understanding of what are the recreational facilities and and how are they properly used by the community mm -hmm. great that's great that's so that was my that's, other question so there is to to tim's point there is a question that came across my email from uh corinne in Natalie Blaze's office about this. And then I got a follow-up call from um, Elena Cullen okay. in Senator Comerford's office. Yeah, They want to know the the intersect that he just mentioned between the DCR land and land okay. and the town, how the town feels about yeah. that. That was just this afternoon, right? The, the yeah. Emails. Yep. Okay. Good. So I don't know all the details. I reached out to Julie for some information about Julie Caswell for some information about that. Um, and so the last article here is a transcript of the citizens petition that was received last week. Uh, I think the requisite amount of signatures based on the receipt from the town clerk's review mm -hmm. has been achieved. Um, after some review council. ACM, an audience member is saying she can't hear, so. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, so the requisite number of signatures has been achieved, I believe. So what I did was I transcribed the language and identified it in a similar manner as I've identified things in the past that are not sponsored directly by the select board by identifying it as a citizen's petition and then the article number. So those are the things that I have for requests. The, the order of articles can change the board, you guys can make that decision later. Um, typically, I put funding articles first, but again, you guys can decide how you want to do that. Okay. Yeah. And so, like, the if we've asked for another one, so Article Eight currently could become Article Nine, right? Right. And yep. uh, right. And and others might change their number depending on where we put. I yep. would expect yep. that to happen once once I have better language, Trevor. Yeah, I could you, put I'll it. Get you good language on this. I yep. would put it around there. I mean, yeah. worse comes to worse. Because this is a transfer, I mean, it could be part of a motion too. But worse comes to worse, if there's an ex, if there's an article for specifically that, right, to identify it, fine, that's fine. Yeah, no worries. Yep. Was there anything else that any of you wanted on the warrant? Well, I mean. No, because that I, you can think about that I haven't I mean, provided. Have, I've we, gone through my email several well, times. Are we actually going to vote on this tonight, or are we? No. Okay, we're just looking at. Yeah, it. You're looking that at. That was my concern because yeah, yeah. I still we're looking at recommendations from the finance committee right, right here right. now. There's a bunch of other things that I want to look at, and there's some things I want to see mm -hmm. um, maybe 
a couple of the articles myself to get changed up a little bit here. Mm -hmm. So and see what you think about so it. So final language doesn't necessarily happen until the 18th. Yeah. Okay. So okay. it won't be long, but um, a couple of weeks. What What I normally do is when I've nailed down a little bit more of the language, I will start to send this to council for a preview because we need to make sure that certain articles like land disposition, the article 97 land for uh, permanent restriction, conservation restriction, those four parcels. Right. We need to make sure that that language is clear. So typically it goes to council, council reviews, it gets back to us. And there's a series of, you know, and back and forth with town, with town council, the moderator and the clerk. So the other, the last items I'm thinking about are Stillwater Road. We're not ready to put anything We're not, for that. There's more information that we needed from DOT. And so we eight. have title work that's happening right now, but there's more information from DOT as well as identifying article, current Article 97 land that we could swap. There's one parcel or a piece of a parcel around Stillwater Bridge that when you have Article 97 land that you have to take out, mm -hmm. you have to replace it with something. So Christopher Nolan and Chris Nolan, Christopher and I were trying to figure out how to identify that. Um, uh, and so I'm just wondering by the time we get to April, is it too late? It, part of this is not having a lot as much information from DOT as we need. I need so phone with I do, I will tell you there, uh, there was a meeting, both Christopher and I had conflicts last week about this, but Lisa DOT had a meeting about this and I got the outline of what they had. All right. They had discussed and some of it's on them. All right. So there's going to be some follow-up to that. Okay. Um, you know, we, st we still need to deal with the effluent pipe, but I don't have any answer from srf grant program yet uh so that was a question yet um did you want to have some sort of a funding article i i don't know if we can at the moment because um we just don't have any answer on okay. the cost and that i mean we have an estimate of you know, two and a half million or two million or something but that really doesn't help us at the moment so um yeah it's work, a, it sounds like we're not ready for, for yeah. considering that yeah we just you know. can't at the moment. We're supposed to hear this late summer here, and it's fall. <laughs> so yeah, I don't yeah. know. I'll try to get an answer from from. I mean, obviously, if if some something changes, we don't really have an engineering plan either, right? No. Well, sort of, but not, not very bag yeah. of napkin thing, right? So, um, what about you, Blake? Do you have anything that you're thinking about that? Well, um, yeah, there's just a couple of articles that I want to that you want to work on. Yeah, yeah but, I yeah. want to work on okay. it and get changed up with this. Um, I'm concerned about the St. James property because it's it's actually slated now just to go to senior housing and I'm not comfortable with that. So I think we need to either change it so that the select board can either just sell it outright or for senior housing, at least change that. Um, or like I say, have a discussion about it. Okay, and any other article that you're interested in trying to? No, I was, yeah, the, well, and the thing is, there's really nothing we can go with here because a lot of this has to do with figures and we don't have the figures. Uh, for for which? For like which? the transferring of money and, yeah, you know, yeah. all the stuff that has to be done. So, I mean, that's something that when we do sit down, we'll have all of that. Not necessarily. No, not always. Right. So here, here's... It, this is sort of an educational thing. Well, welcome to the select board. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so the reason you write a sum of money is because you may not have that nailed down by the time you have to post the warrant. Right. The but warrant then, has to be posted 14 days prior to town meeting. You'll right? have it in the motions. And but you'll by have the time, time you get to talk the town meeting, it. that number will be in the motions. Yeah. Okay. And here's what we do in terms of process. So the warrant gets posted, the motions get started, and usually the motions are fairly Generic. pulled up when you're doing, when you're going through the, the actual review process for the warrant. Once you get to the, cause there's a whole guide that gets published. I'm sure you've seen it when you've been at a town meeting. Yep. Those things get refined. So between the warrant getting posted and us developing the guide, 
those motions are almost uh, probably 90% complete. They're often a little bit, a little tweak here and there. There are times we've had to make little tweaks here and there on the at town meeting but yep. usually by the time the motion is developed you have a number got it it's just it's part of that process that's yep. that why that's why we warn people with the words a sum of money so you know you're going to be voting money we just don't know how much it is by the time we have to post um and sometimes being too specific can cause problems because if there's legal work to be done okay, and there's an extra cost in the legal work and you've appropriated four hundred dollars and it turns out to be six hundred dollars then you have to go back to special you have to go back to another meeting and get an appropriation etc so um that usually doesn't come into play in these things but not always i mean most of the time the process includes making sure that certain things go through other committees so right. that's the reason I sent an email to the planning board. That's the reason capital has to review certain things because each one of those bylaws carries a stipulation. And so the town, it's one of the things the town administrator has to pay attention to is who's got to look at what <laughs> before we get to the yep. town meeting guide. And if we don't, and so if the board doesn't have recommendations from finance committee in time to publish, that's not the end of the world. Right. The recommendations can then go in the town meeting guide so people know. Okay. And oftentimes finance committee will meet on the day of the meeting right. and they'll have a pre-meeting and they'll yep. say, I'm now we're satisfied that we can recommend this or now we're not satisfied. We're not going to recommend this. And they, they uh, given an opportunity to speak out uh, when, when, uh, when the, the article is brought up by the moderator. Yep. And there's also, so they have a meeting tomorrow and I gave them the draft. Good of this, but now I have to add another article right. to this. So I'll update their draft for their meeting for tomorrow. Okay. All right. What time are they meeting? Usually starting at five, but are they- Six, five? Okay. Same. Oh, we can't make it tomorrow, that's right. Yeah, six. Okay. So that I think they're meeting at six tomorrow and I think they're meeting on the 25th as well. Are you gonna be here for the meeting or? Um, I was gonna, let me see. I'm not going to be, but I just wanted to be able to explain that. Tomorrow. Oh, the the mini split thing. The mini split thing. tomorrow night. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I I, I have it in my calendar. Oh, you, so, okay, yeah. great. Thank you. I got it. Once I have it. better language, it'll be easier for them to understand too. Yeah, I just I gotta just remember. Maybe get in touch it. with Shelley. We've been doing it every year, so I think they'll remember. Yeah, I knew that there was this money, how the money mm -hmm. comes in thing, but. Yep. Okay. I'll reach out to Shelley. Yep. Okay. Okay, so we'll we'll be taking this up again on the September eighteenth meeting. Yes. So um, I think we've covered it pretty well for now. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, so in, under the uh, employment and other policies, job descriptions, et cetera, um, can you talk us talk us through what you what what we've received? So, finance committee in August approved a draft financial policy. What you have what you have is a copy of the policy and a copy of the slide deck that Julie Shalfont, the chair, developed sort of to explain it. Um, and it shows some of the factors that go into developing a financial policy. And really the financial policy is a guideline to how you manage the town's money. Um, some towns have very in-depth financial policies and some don't. These are fairly um, straightforward. They could, there's a lot of things that could be a part of them, but I wanted you to see this as a first read because at the end of their meeting last week, when they approved these, um, the chair asked me to schedule a time to meet with the board to go over them. So I thought it would be a good opportunity since she sent them to me for you to be able to take them back and start reading through them. So I certainly wouldn't want you to make any kind of a decision now. Julie wants to come in and talk to you about it. So, but this gives you the backdrop of what they discussed and what the goal is. Yep. Yeah, and so we're taking this under advisement, yes. and um, we have to. I mean, I'm I'm sure going to need to get some advice from other people about this because 
Um, you don't want to do anything that unintended consequences ensue where you set a rigid policy, you don't meet the policy, and then your credit rating suffers because you didn't meet the policy. Whereas if you had a range that said from seven to 14% and you were at nine, you're still meeting the policy. Um, but in an ideal circumstance, you know, you might want to have 14. So I want us to be really careful about this because the, the select board has to approve these policies. They just can't be yep. set. So I, I'm, I may even look into, you know, trying to get some financial experts to come in and talk to us. I mean, I, I think they've done a great job to start the process and it's good to start thinking about, you know, managing finances in a, in an orderly fashion. I think yep. we've done a good job in the past, but, but um, so this is great. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, there's some things like, for instance, the OPEB policy is noted in here, something that I had asked you guys to review a little bit earlier this year and added a line, a bullet point to it. So it's been incorporated with that additional bullet point. So one of the reasons you do this is you pull it into one document, it makes it easier to look at. Is there anything else under that rubric that no. you had? Um, all right. So you talked about Stillwater just briefly and whether we, where we were, Trevor. So do you have any other thoughts? I mean, these are placeholders that are in here, but. Uh, no, I'm good. So one thing I did want to mention and uh, I uh, neglected to earlier is that the town, uh, speaking of DES and um, the HVAC work that they've been doing there, the, the town and Casey were notified, um, it was Monday, wasn't it? Uh, or maybe last week that the town has been granted $190,187 grant from the Department of Energy Resources Green Communities Division for the following purposes, about $2,500 for additional weatherization at the elementary school. Uh, about $5,600 for additional insulation work at the school and uh, $182,079 to um, work on the building controls for the HVAC system. So um, having a smart system to manage energy through through that. So I sp I've spoken with Darius about this and he's thrilled mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, we are pretty excited. I, I, Brenda's response was that, oh, another project to manage. I know, <laughs> but, but but it's a great thing for the school. So It is. They've been working on it and have to and, buy it anyways. So. Yeah, and some of this may cover costs that they would, would have otherwise had to take out of school choice or, mm -hmm. or in some other funding sources. Absolutely would have. So um, it's, uh, it's due to the, actually the energy department, uh, energy, energy committee, committee uh, David Keith, and David Keith and Gilbert, and Emily and Sweetland. Uh, yeah, and, and uh, they worked really hard on this uh, with with Casey, and um, so kudos to them for you yeah, know they worked great. really hard to coordinate yeah, this with the great. school. Um, so I don't do much but hit some. Alice engaged does a lot of the help, but she it gives them a lot of the help, and she works at the cock. But it's just uh, like Rachel does. Yeah, it's good. It's it's like how a local uh, committee can make a difference. So. Anybody out there looking to volunteer for committees that we have openings? Just another reason why it's a good idea. Um, so I don't, I don't have anything else. Does any? But we have some mail. There's a little. There's a little bit of mail. There was a couple of notifications of releases, chemical releases. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to do anything, but you have to be notified. So one's a final. I forget what they call it. It's a final process notification. And the other is a notification that there was a release and that something's going to have to be done environmentally. And so really DEP wants to make sure that everybody's handling any type of release, could be oil, could be a chemical, that they handle it under the guidelines that DEP provides. So the Board of Health and usually the select board get notification of that. Mm -hmm. So I include it for reference, just in case anybody asks you. So I do want to mention that um, <clears throat> there is um, a letter from residents uh, over near the yes, south. There's south, a petition. Yeah, the, uh, over near the uh, south, Deer, south Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Plant um, concerning um, light pollution. So 
Um, I can speak to that a little bit. Yep. So I, I was talking with um, Eric Meals today about that, and uh, he's going to institute uh, a little bit of evaluation on timers if the lights are on during the day to shut them off for one, save energy. Um, I'm surprised that they were on during the day, but um, if they are, so we get them on a timer to do that. There's a concern about the light in the evening and we do need the lights on for safety. So um, I know we're gonna look at maybe planting some Arbor Fide to kind of diffuse the light a bit, um, but we're gathering a bit of that data cost when we can fit it in the budgets and you can't you can't adjust the lights or the lights are where they're supposed to be they are where they're supposed to be i mean they face down but it's so i was going to evaluate a little bit more with him and then start to kind of try and plan a, a way to block it a bit um it, it's very important to have it on for it not it, even if people aren't there it's to deter people from coming there and breaking right. in or any of that stuff right. but just for safety period so i mean there's more lights because there's more buildings than there were before so right. Um, but we'll, you know, work on it and keep trying to find a way to, to make it better. So, uh, we'll have more to report on it, but we are looking at it and figuring out a way to, to help with that. And, um, any, the last thing is, as I, as I mentioned earlier, um, Casey is, uh, uh retiring uh, effective, uh, Friday. And so I'd like to, um, again, thank her for all the years of service for the community. Um, she's, as her letter points out, been involved in the municipal government for 28 years, 24 of which were working in Deerfield in one capacity or another. Um, with regard to this, I would like to um, suggest that we, we have a, a relatively recent job description for town administrators. So it was formulated with the personnel board's approval in 2022. I'd like us to um, take the necessary steps to put this job out. We need to discuss a pay range mm -hmm. um, because different people would come in potentially with different levels of experience. So I propose that we have a meeting um, next week um, on, uh, let's see, we, we said September 11th, um, schedule it at 4 p.m., mm -hmm. one topic meeting, um, to try and make all of the decisions that are need necessary to post the job, mm -hmm. um, and get a search committee together. Get a search committee together. Uh, we've been successful recently with the search committees we've been using, and um, so make all the plans necessary for that um, transition to to get that out there as quickly as possible. Um, any thoughts on? How, what else we might need to do in short term, Trevor, Blake? Say that again. Any other thoughts on our, our response to the well? The like you thing? say, there's quite a bit of paperwork with this here, and uh, being that that we just haven't been informed within the last couple of days, right? Definitely having that meeting next week would be good, so that we can actually sit down and come up with a plan and go over what what the what it uh, states now. Yep. Um, Make sure the wording is correct on that. And um, like you said, we're, we're looking at people that are going to apply with different levels of experience. We have to make it so that, again, it's palatable and that uh, people looking at this that are coming on board are comfortable with uh, the description itself. Mm -hmm. Um one other question I had, um, we had a potential motion that we didn't do. I thought that um, that's why I raised the question about closing the warrant. Um, in our first action, we had set the date that we were opening it and the right. date it was closing. So it's already you, in If effect. you want to close it now, you can. Yeah. You can always open it again. Right. I would prefer to close it now. So I would like to make a motion to close the special town meeting warrant and have the administrative staff confer with the town clerk, moderator, and town council on final article language and motions. I'll second that motion as long as we, we've got the, as as corrected, right, with the additional article that we added tonight. Yeah, well, it's, yeah. it's to, yeah, to work on the language. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Yep. So my question is on this is that we were set up that we're going to really review this on the 18th mm -hmm. and actually 
make sure that it's right. what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. So we can actually work with this document and actually change open things open it. and do whatever they, they, we need yeah, to do. Absolutely. Yeah. And this then I'm I'm for it. Yeah, this talks problem. about, you know, yeah. the the it's the the things that are going to be on the warrant or we're closing it to say there's going to be nine items and the actual language the lawyers will tweak and uh, yeah. work with the administration and us it and just, we, it just means no other changing yeah the wording on that that's yeah. what that's it what means what no other entities yeah. are bringing us yeah. articles it's okay. closed so in other words yeah that's it warrant. this is the end of it okay yeah. you can't add anything to it unless yeah. unless we right like something could happen and we could bring up yeah a, you know okay we have to respond to this right um yeah i get that But we have that there's a a, a point where we can't do that anymore, right? It has so like, like statutorily the point, before. The point that you can't add anything or do anything is the point where you really have to post it. And so yeah. what I did when I outlined sort of a timeline here, I let people know that we need to post on the 20th. Yeah. So 18th is kind of our last On the 18th, thing. you'll be asked to approve the warrant as it's presented and, post, and yeah. sign the back sheets and then you know, by that time, council will have had at least two shots at looking at that. Yep. Um, I've already sent it to council, the moderator and the clerk, but with this change, this additional article, it's yeah. going to have to be updated as well. Wow. Yep. So normally when I do that, I, I blind carbon copy you all. I will blind carbon copy the finance committee as well, because that will indicate that there's been a change. Okay. Okay. So any further discussion? All those uh, hearing none, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. Okay. Um, anything else anyone needs to bring up? All so right. So that meeting is the 11th at 4 p.m., one topic, yes. right? Yes. All right. So I need to make sure that I. I have it on my list of things to do. Good. Thank you. And then. Um, There, I would like one thing. I would like to do one thing for the board. Sure. So there's a couple of clerical things that I'd like to make fit with the other job descriptions that have been approved. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to make those adjust adjustments from a clerical perspective so that the next document, you when you look at the document next week, you'll have those corrections. Sure. And one thing that also needs to happen. So personnel board has a meeting on the 6th or has a anticipated meeting on the 16th personnel board should okay. also approve it. Yes. Right. So um, what I'd like to ask is that when you do this, can you put that in edit trace, whatever you're going to add? Oh, um, yeah. 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 So that I we can see um, because the, the, the 2022 version has already been vetted by the personnel committee. It has, and, and then we made some sort right, of right. So I'm just saying that changes. if the select board decides that rather than waiting for the personnel board to meet that we move forward with the as written i think that we have to have that option so what i normally do is even if personnel board doesn't get a chance to look at something before a vacancy is posted i will i normally put the word draft up there and i because there have been times where we've had to put a vacancy up very quickly so you put a draft on there when you upload your job description and your vacancy notice and then mm -hmm. forward it to personnel and they will review it. And if there's a small change here or there, that can be uploaded as as it's been changed. But okay. Yeah. Okay. unless there's a truly fundamental piece of that job description that gets changed, there's often Good. not much discussion okay. or not nope. many questions. Yeah, I just don't want it to hold us up. Nope. Nope. And and I've told them that in the past where we've had those situations. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, there's one final motion that I, I want to make, and that's to move to accept town administrator's notification of retirement effective September 6. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Lee Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye. All right, so... If there's nothing else, um, we have a regular scheduled meeting on September 18. We have a special meeting on September 11. And I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Trevor McDaniel, aye. Blake Gilmore, aye. Tim Hilchey, aye.
Thanks everyone for coming.